Hello and welcome to WJTS Inform. Tonight we continue a part two of our discussion with Mark Mesmer about this year's legislative session for 2013. Mark is the state representative for District 63. And uh, Mark, welcome very much. Uh, welcome to the show. Yep, good to be here again. Uh, thanks for the viewers for tuning in for the second night on the road to, to find out <laughs> Other than the budget, what else do we uh, do that might have some interest? Well, let's talk about some, some bills that you think are significant okay. for people in our area, and then we'll also talk about maybe some bills that you, you didn't really like. Sure. Okay. Well, as I shared yesterday in the budget, the budget is 60% education spending. So uh, some of the bills that I'm going to talk about are you know really d dealing with education issues. Uh, the first one uh, was House Bill uh, 1110. And that allows, we extended a, a process we started in, in the budget two years ago, uh, allows schools uh, out of their capital projects funds to, to take money from the capital account and spend it for insurance and utility costs. Uh, extended that out through 2015. Okay. So it gives them a couple more years to, you know, if, if budgets are tight within a local corporation, it gives them, and a lot of times there's extra capital money but you maybe don't have enough to cover you know, the operating expenses, and this allows them to, to shift some of the capital funds over to the, to the uh, operating side of, of the ledger. And, and you know, it could mean, you know, I mean, we talk about utility costs. You know, it could be half a million to a million dollars to pay you know, gas bills, electric bills for, you know, for an entire school corporation. It can be a significant amount of money. So well, some people may not realize that, that the school boards are so restricted in, in some of the way they can spend that oh, yeah. money and, and you need legislation to clear yeah. that up. Because the capital yeah. money comes from property taxes and then the, the operating money comes from basically state revenue, sales tax, income tax. You know, basically the, 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 the money that comes to operate the dated operations is all sent to the co corporation from the state. Uh, locally, and, and you can adopt, you know, local property tax increases, you know, if it's passed by referendum, to get some extra money as well. But the, uh, you know, the, allow them to transfer you know, the, the capital projects fund money over for utilities and insurance. You know, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good chunk of their, you know, their operating funds that we, we allow them some flexibility. Okay. Another bill that that uh, will help teachers is uh, House Bill 1334, and it allows the state to provide liability insurance for teachers uh, um, as part of their, you know, the liability insurance as, you know, to cover them in, in the process of doing their job. So uh, prior to that, they would have had to purchase that maybe, you know, individually, but this is going to allow the state to be the, the provider of that liability insurance for teachers. So save them some money and, and uh, give them liability, you know, insurance coverage. So that, that's a nice shot for them. Uh, House Bill 1357. Um, it, it would allow a school corporation uh, to hire a superintendent that doesn't necessarily come from you know the teaching ranks. It could be somebody who has an MBA. Uh, have, they have to have a master's degree, uh, you know, to, to to be able to to be hired as a superintendent. But they don't necessarily have to come from the teaching ranks to be a superintendent. And people say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, when you get a school corporation, you know, the size of Indianapolis Public Schools, you've got multiple layers of superintendents already and the, you know the, the the head superintendent might have five or ten or fifteen assistant superintendents you know so they're really you know and that's going to be probably the area where the interest is going to be the most where they're more of a, a chief financial officer more so than than you know maybe an administrator that works on curriculum or you know, transportation you know there's you know some some school corporations the superintendent does all of those duties, maybe some of the smaller school corporations mm -hmm. in the state. But the bigger they are, the more layers of, of administration that they have, you really need somebody to be the administer, administrator of administrators. <laughs> uh, and that's what that bill does? Yep, yep, okay. that bill does that. Uh, people say, well, why would you do that? Well, our, our current uh, state superintendent of public instruction wouldn't you know, prior to this bill passing, wouldn't qualify to be a school superintendent, although she can be the superintendent of all the superintendents. So this would kind of clears that up a yeah. little bit. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, Senate Bill One. Uh, there was a lot of discussion uh, after the uh, the uh, school violence uh, out in uh, Connecticut, mm -hmm. uh, and and really some schools had started this already, but they've got what they call uh, uh, resource officers in the school corporations. This set up a matching grant program that they can, they can if you have over a thousand students in your school corporation, the state will give you a matching grant of $50,000, up to $50,000. Uh, 
Um, and if you're under that, you can either pair two small school corporations and get the $50,000 grant or $35,000 if you're under $1,000. Okay. And, and that can be used for hiring a resource officer um, or it can be used to, to pay for technology improvements, security improvements to your school, either one. Um, or both. Okay. And uh, you, you can use that money, you know, for either additional sc school security or, or hiring the person to be the basically the security director for your school corporation. Okay. So very very positive, a, a, a you know great great asset to the schools again. And the last bill that that uh, really I think will help schools is, is Senate Bill 189. And if you're a, an A rated school at your high school level, it allows you to <clears throat> to have flexibility in your calendar. Instead of having 180 days, you can have the equivalent of that 180 days, you know, in the amount of hours or minutes, whatever that you, you know. So you could, you could go instead of going 180 days, you could go less days, but more, but more a longer hours, day, but longer day. Okay. And 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 that would be, you know, strictly it gives them some flexibility on, on you know, on on uh, rules and policies. You know, if you're performing at a high level, we're gonna they're gonna they're gonna loosen some some restrictions and allow you to have a little more flexibility in how you manage your your uh, curriculum and your and your your school day calendar so uh, nice little tweak and and uh, and and I think that calendar of flexibility I think is limited just to the to the to the high school calendar not to the, not to the elementaries at this point so um, that's kind of the recap of some of the education bills of interest uh, one that came through my committee that finally passed this year uh, was uh, another one was what they call an artisan distillers mm -hmm. uh, permit and allows uh, companies that want to basically set up uh, distilleries for you know for bourbon and have have they can sell it on premises and they can they can sell up to 10,000 gallons a year through what they call an artisan's distiller permit we have farm wineries we have microbreweries mm -hmm. um, and and the the uh, and it, there, there's a three-year process. You have to either be uh, a distiller that sells, you know, that was, and, and there's a federal permit that goes along with it, and a state permit because when you're pr when you're uh, producing, you know, bourbon or or whiskey, uh, there's a federal permit that takes quite a you know quite a process to get, and and you and there, there's a application process, and it's a it's a pretty pretty stringent uh, requirements to get there, but Th this would allow us to now have what they call artisan distillers. So uh, there's a big tourism industry that that has really grown around, you know, the artisan distillers in Kentucky and Tennessee, mm -hmm. uh, the farm wineries and microbreweries, you know, in the state. So it'll really work hand in hand with you know with that that program and and be a nice shot in the arm for you know for entrepreneurs that want to start a you know start a new business. An another set of jobs. Another, yep, another exactly. source of jobs. Yep. Uh, one that passed. First bill we passed this session that really is a, a, a bill of high interest to our ag community was Senate Bill 319, mm -hmm. that that a lot, it requires there to be a, a, a new formulation of, of the of the uh, agricultural ground you know ground uh, processing of their of their you know their tax formula. Uh, the USDA came up with a new set of soil productivity factors, and the Department for Local Government Finance wanted to just take those new factors and plug them into the old formula. And caused about a 50% increase, you know, to, to most farmers on on their tax rate. So uh, having them go back and recalculate it and come back next session with the, you know, with the updated tax formula for that. And that's a bill that when it got passed, it became law. Most of the bills you're talking about don't become law most until most of them start July, July 1st. 1st. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we needed to do that one and put it in into play immediately because uh, tax assessments were going out and tax bills were going out that are due. What is it? May 15th. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so that deadline was was creeping up quickly. So we had to act on that one pretty fast. Um, oh, and and the uh, Senate Bill 371 uh, deals with chemical abortions, and it requires facilities that that administer chemical abortions to to comply with all of the other rules and regulations. Uh, you know that they have to, uh, you know, for other surgical abortions. All of the notification requirements, you know, all of the, I mean, everything that, because there was a lot of loopholes that the legislation, the you know, statute just didn't address, you know, when dealing with chemical abortions. So, if you know, they're all treated the same, okay. and the governor, I think, might have signed that one yesterday. So I thought there was a news news blip that went out on that one. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. One that didn't go so well, uh, as an example. Okay. A bill you didn't like? <laughs> a bill I didn't like. <laughs> okay. and, you know, and I don't know that if I didn't like the, the, the thought, mm -hmm. but the way, it was, the way it was packaged and the way it was presented was really very hypocritical. Uh, the Indy Motor uh, in, Indianapolis 500 track is in need of some upgrades for handicap accessibility. And, and they came to the legislature asking for you know, some way to help you know, help them finance their improvements. And they were gonna need to spend um, about $100 million. And so, the, so the, the, the fellows that were working on that came up with a way, and rather than just calling it a, you know, a grant to the, to the track and you know, let's you know, throw it out there and, and see what kind of support it got. And, and if they would have sold it, presented it, and packaged it, as we're going to we're going to give them a grant for the improvements, you know, are they a good steward and, and a and a good economic partner for the state? You know, sure. But the way they packaged it and the way they sold it is probably the part that bothered me the most. They said, well, we don't want to give them a grant. We want to give them five a five million dollar a year um, loan and 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 have them pay us back. But the way they came up with paying us back is with sales tax that are collected at the track. So, so not, we're, we're taking public money to pay back public money. It's a grant. But they didn't want to, you know, they were afraid to, to present it as a, you know, as a gift to, you know, to an individual business, which that's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the, the way they sold it, the way they presented it is, as, well, it's not really a grant, it's a loan, it's a lease, we're going to own the improvements. Well, what good does it do you to own a handicap ramp, you know, at, at the track? Uh, I guess there's some repayment mechanisms in it if the track ever closes or, you know, but in reality, as long as the track stays in its current ownership and stays open, you know, it's a $5 million a year grant. So and it's really, it's not that they're getting the money because it's important to Indiana. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just the way of making it look the like way, they're getting a, a loan, but they're really just they're, getting a grant. Okay. They're getting a grant. Right. So I voted against that when it, it, it passed, you know, pretty easily. I mean, it wasn't it really a close vote, but... The people outside of Indianapolis that, that didn't vote for it, you know, didn't vote for it because basically it was, you know, it was a Marion County issue. Yeah. So. All right. Now, um, the legislation has ended, mm -hmm. uh, but your work doesn't end. Uh, no. And, you know, I'm sure there's some bills that, that didn't get passed that you'd like to see come back up again mm -hmm. or some, some things that people have concerns about. And now is the time to contact your legislator sure. and talk to them about that. Yeah. A lot of times if they contact us during session, you know, there's, I mean, sometimes we can react and, and, and work it into something that's, that's, that's in process mm -hmm. through an amendment if it's pretty, you know, if it's pretty simple. Uh, but if you have ideas for legislation that you'd like to see, you know, addressed, you know, now till, you know, next January is when we, when we work on drafting legislation and, and putting, putting all those bills together and bills that didn't pass this session that, you know, we'll find out maybe why they didn't pass this time or why they didn't, get, why they didn't move through the process make the adjustments and get them, get them ready to bring them back. And, and also throughout you know, the entire year is, is just you know, helping out with constituent services. If, if folks are having trouble with a state, a state organization, BMV, Department of Revenue, uh, you name it, all of, the, all of the state agencies, if there's issues that you need help with, you know, don't hesitate to call. They just give you a call. Mm -hmm. And I guess there are bills that, like the artisan distillery, mm -hmm. uh, took years. It just kept coming back up. But you know, this is the time to let you know that you're for or against it or other ideas along that line. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Many bills like that take multiple years to get through because they, maybe they get through part of the process, they get stopped because, you know, maybe the way it was structured wasn't just quite right. Uh, so uh, there, there'll be some bills I'll bring back next year, one that dealt with, you know, Crane Westgate and, and the, you know, then possibly the, you know, the new markets tax credit bill, find out, you know, at the end why it didn't, you know, the things that just didn't quite make the push and adjust them and talk to the budget chairman or, you know, the person that, that whoever stopped it, work with them to find out why. And then get it changed? And yep. go, okay. Well, and, but you won't have as much time next year because this was the long session. Next year is the short next session. Year, yeah. Next year we'll go from about the first week in January to about the middle of March, you know, 10th, 15th of March. And, and it's, it's a little shorter. We have basically, instead of having six weeks of committee time, we have three weeks of committee time. So you don't have as much time to get, you know, bills mm -hmm. through committees and and uh, it, it's pretty rapid fire and moves fast, and, and uh, so 
now's the time to start getting ready for next year. All right. Well, Mark, thank you very much for coming. Oh, and welcome. really do appreciate you coming in every Friday uh, during the session to sure. kind of keep, keep us up to date. Yep. Our guest has been District 63 State Representative Mark Mesmer, and we certainly appreciate all that he has done for us and, and coming here to the TV station and being a guest. Mm -hmm. And we'll have him back throughout the summer to kind of keep us up to date on things. Yep, study committees will begin uh, probably around, you know, July-ish. So once, once those things start, we can give you some updates on what's happening. Work is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching WJTS Inform. We are local people watching local people.